Hello everybody, today we're doing a video on measuring and testing gold and silver with density. And what you might need to repeat this experiment is a string of dental floss, a cup of water, and a decent gram scale. Now I have here two specimens. I've got this sterling ring. It's marked 925 on the inside. And then we've got this um, basically piece of scrap broken belt buckle that used to have maybe a silver dollar in it or something. It's also marked sterling. So what I do is I'm trying to measure well first of all I've already weighed both objects this ring weighed 11.8 grams and this broken belt buckle weighed 26.8 grams. I wrote it down on my paper so that I can keep track. So the first step is to tear your water. My scale is kind of fussy sometimes. I'm going to zero it and then we got to put this on there. It goes up to 320.2 grams and then I'm going to tear it so that it just zeroes out. And once I've got that zeroed, I can take my piece of jewelry and dip it into the water. Now that pushes the water up by the volume of the ring. Okay, so we're trying to measure the volume of the ring to get a good density. Sometimes I try to knock the bubbles off a little bit. So the scale is telling me now that it's 1.4 grams of water that were displaced. So I'm going to take it out and I'm going to write that down. 1.4 grams water H2O. Alright now I removed some water so my scales out of balance. I have to re-tear it. Reuse. The reason I use a piece of dental floss is because the volume of the dental floss is almost zero. It's so close to zero that in most cases it doesn't matter. It doesn't change the volume of the object that I'm measuring. So we're going to do the belt buckle now. Alright, so it's giving me 2.6 grams of water displaced. Alright, I can just drop that in there. 2.6 grams H2O. Alright, so once you have the weight of the object, and the amount of water that are displaced in grams. What you do to calculate it is you take the weight of the object and you divide it by the amount of water in grams. Now the amount of water in grams is equal to the amount of centimeters cubed that were displaced. That's how you get mass over volume. So 1.1 grams of water is equal to 1.4 grams centimeters cubed of volume. So for the ring we calculate this and we get 8.428 which isn't very good and I'll explain that in a minute. And then for the buckle we get 10.31 and this is much closer to what we would expect or want to get. So generally speaking silver in its if it's pure is 10.49 grams per centimeter cubed but since we're working with uh, sterling, sterling is 92.5 percent silver and so it's got some lead or copper or something else mixed in or nickel often it has uh, alloyed in. So um, in the case of the buckle, uh, if you remember the buckle doesn't have any stones or bubbles or spaces that are um, expanded in some way but the ring what it has is it's got this gemstone right here in the center and the gemstone somewhere between one to maybe three or four grams per centimeter cubed so since it's got a much um, lower density number it will move this so for this ring, I feel like we 
wouldn't be able to know if it was sterling or not. Now because it has a mark, the probability that it is silver is very high and also the color is a very good silver color. It's another way you can tell. So because I know that it has this gemstone that's shifting the volume of the object a lot, then I know that this test isn't a very good match for this object. But for some other objects like this belt buckle or just a pure ring or maybe a bar or a coin or something, this method works very well. And um, there, what I've used this for is often I'll see um, a gold ring or, or a necklace. It comes in the shop and it's not marked. Some unmarked gold jewelry is 10 karat and some unmarked gold jewelry is not. I would argue more of it is not. So over here on the right, you've got some examples of different, uh, different values. So 10 karat gold, you can expect to get about an 11 or a 10 and a half, 14, 12.5, 18, 14.5, 22, 17.7, and pure gold is a 19.32. Now, there, there are some things to keep in mind here. Um, if you get an 8.94, see there's a lot of things that are below 10. And so if you have a number below 10 that's like in the 8s, 9s, or 7s, it's probably a base metal that you're working with or you, you're looking at. And so copper, nickel, iron, seven, eight, eight, almost nine for both of those. Lead, now if it looks like it's the color of lead, kind of like a dark gray color, and it also density tests close to an 11.3, then it's probably lead. Tungsten is a 19.3, so this again could be put into a fake gold bar or something and really throw off this measurement. On things like that, you just have to cut the bar open or, or test it some other way because tungsten doesn't look gold when you cut it in half. So that's the other way to tell. Well, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. Please subscribe. And um, if you have any suggestions for videos or things you're interested in relating to buying gold, testing gold, silver. Um, those are some of the things that I know how to do and I will post more videos. Thanks. Bye.